Hi, I'm Andy Glass with WorkshopAttic.com. In our professional woodworking shop, we rely on a lot of technology, high-end pieces of equipment, and quality tools. And one that is very misunderstood in the woodworking world is a CNC machine. A lot of people view them as toys uh, and, and undervalued. Um, a lot of see, people see them as uh, intimidating and you just need to have a lot of knowledge to run them. Well, I can tell you uh, there is a little bit of a learning curve, of course, and that comes with everything, but a CNC is extremely valuable and uh, there are certain projects and tasks that we have in the shop that we can offer our clients that we just simply could not do without a CNC machine. Uh, here in front of me, we have a ShopBot Desktop Max, uh, and recently we have a client that we're doing some cabinets for that are walnut, and in that particular room, they want matching uh, outlet and switch covers for the walnut trim and cabinets in that room. So we're going to leverage our CNC technology, and we're going to mass produce these beautiful walnut outlet plate covers. Now, with that being said, we only did 18 of them. Uh, we do have additional room here on the CNC, but this was all the client uh, required at this time. CNCs allow our shop the ability to uh, bring different capabilities, bring different product lines, and allow uh, value-added products uh, to our clients. We were doing a main cabinet job for this client, and we were able to uh, offer these outlet covers with our CNC capabilities that we wouldn't be able to before. So hopefully you guys give CNC's a open mind, um, sit back, enjoy, I'll show you how I made these and hopefully uh, gives you a better respect for CNC's in your woodworking shop. We start with material that is planed and surface sanded to get a thickness of 0.25 of an inch. If your material is different than what you put in the CAD CAM program, you need to make sure you correct it. We use double-sided tape for our hold-down method. It is fast, easy, and affordable. And with these smaller parts, a vacuum table would work, but you need to use a different CAD CAM strategy. With the material ready, we can install our quarter-inch end mill and use the Z0 touch plate to set the Z0. Remember, we set the Z plane during the CAD CAM video on the top of the spoil board and not on the top of the material. We are ready to load our program into the control interface on the computer and hit start and watch the CNC do all our work to exact perfection. Our first program does all the quarter inch bit tasks. This includes the main pocket while leaving a small post in the center to support the plate when installing, and then a quick surfacing on that post to bring it to the right height. This footage is sped up, but for all 18 plates, op, or operation one, took roughly 45 minutes. Also remember, we could have put a third board and were able to add to our production totals if we desired. As you can see, this makes quite a mess without the dust boot on. We leave it off for video purposes to show you the bit up close and doing what it does best, cutting the material. No one wants to watch a dust boot run around the surface. That is absolutely no fun. But all kidding aside, a quality dust extractor is going to be able to handle the long run times a CNC machines tend to have and be able to collect all the dust and chips with the dust boot on. We run a dust and chip separator right before our dust extractor. This helps minimize bag changes and filter changes in the dust extractor. With OP1 completed, we can pull the hose from the dust boot housing and vacuum all the chips and dust. With everything clear, we can install our 1 8 inch bit and re-zero on the surface of the spoil board. For OP2, use an 8 inch end mill to cut out the pockets for the outlet heads, drill the mounting screw hole, and then the profile cuts to cut the actual outlet cover out. We are pretty aggressive with this small 1 8 inch end mill, but all the confidence and production value come into your speeds and feeds. You want the bit to actually make a chip instead of just turning all the material into dust. If you turn the machine on as fast as you can, your bit will rub and cause it to wear out and degrade much faster. If your bit actually takes a bite out of the material and makes a chip, you are going to be able to push your speeds and increase your profit margins. As your bit completes each outlet cover, you are able to go through and pull them off starting on OP3. This is the beautiful thing about CNC machines. You are able to complete other work as the machine runs. This could be a different job, process previous parts, or processing the parts as they come off the machine. Our OP3 happens at the router table. We apply a small chamfer with a chamfering bit. This adds a nice subtle detail that's classy, elegant, but yet very simple. Our OP4 happens at the drill press with a countersink bit. We need to apply a countersink to our hole we drilled at the CNC so our mounting screw can sit nice and flush with the surface. Simply step your depth stop at the drill press and you're able to power through all these in no time. OP5 is a quick hand sanding with 220 grit. 
on the edges, faces, and the chamfers. For OP6, we apply 3-4 coats of semi-gloss lacquer and sand in between coats to get a nice baby smooth surface. Well, what do you guys think of the final results? Uh, we thought they turned out absolutely gorgeous. The subtle chamfer just adds a real nice, classy touch to them. The lacquer is just nice and smooth, has a really good feel to them. And just the grain is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, as we said before, this job would not be possible without the uh, CNC technology. This allows us to put another line item uh, on the invoice for our client and just bring another value added position for us uh, out there in the workforce. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Uh, we are bringing a 5 foot by 8 foot uh, alpha machine from ShopBot here middle to late September. And we are really going to step up our cabinet game. Uh, it's going to be a production machine for us and a, and a real solid workhorse. Uh, CNC machines are viewed as toys or can be viewed as toys and you can certainly buy uh, CNC machines that are in that toy grade. Uh, but when you step up to this line of CNC's and above uh, and some of the past CNC's that I've had, you can really grind them out, you can really put them in a production setting and really become a solid asset to your production shop. Or if you're not a production shop, you can really go into air quote production mode uh, with different types of craft projects, different type of smaller projects that CNC's can handle. Um, they are just really valuable in the workshop and we hope you guys have an open mind to future content on here. Again, we have a larger CNC, we have a lot of CNC content coming up both with this desktop max model as well as our large format machines. So we hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them below. We'd be happy to provide some feedback and answer any questions you have. Follow us on social media as we do uh, CNC updates all along the way. We have live stories on Instagram uh, and Facebook, um, and then also the future delivery of our large format CNC as well as exclusive social media giveaways. I'm Andy Glass with Workshop Addict. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.